On paper, this is a shoe of mixed messages. There's squishy racing foam, but there's also dense everyday stuff. There's a carbon fiber plate, but it's only three quarter length. This is a confusingly named Kinvara Pro. And somehow, if you just run in it, you'll find that it actually makes a whole lot of sense. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm an elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Saucony Kinvara Pro. But before I do, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Saucony sent to me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for them. However, no one's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Saucony Kimbara Pro. And this is kind of a unique shoe that I have lots of thoughts on. So I'm gonna depart a little bit from the normal review structure. And for this one, I'm gonna do kind of like all the normal review stuff. So for those of you who are here for a Convara Pro review, don't worry, I got you. But then at the back end, we're gonna get super nerdy and into the nitty gritty details of like shoe, like brand talk in general. So stick around for that if you are super nerdy and interested in that kind of stuff. First, let's get on with the review and talk about some specs. The shoe comes in at 42 millimeters of stack height in the heel with an eight millimeter drop, giving us 34 millimeters of stack height in this shoe. And here we have a combination of things. We've got Power Run PB up in this top layer. This beaded foam up here is made out of Piba and it is Saucony's racing foam. Uh, underneath that, what we have is a layer of Saucony's Power Run, not Power Run Plus, not Power Run PB like we have on the top, just regular Power Run, which I believe is a rubberized EVA material. It's uh, sturdy enough that you can run directly on it so that you don't have to have any rubber on the outsole at all, which helps this shoe definitely save a little bit of weight, which it needs because this shoe comes in at a pretty hefty weight. Saucony lists it at 9.5 ounces or 269 grams, but I weighed mine in a US men's size nine and mine came in over 10 ounces. In between the two layers of midsole foam though, we do have a carbon fiber plate, which you can see in this little window cut out on the bottom of the shoe, but it's not a full length carbon fiber plate. It's a three quarter length carbon fiber plate. Also in this little window on the bottom of the shoe, it says that there's Saucony speed roll technology in here. And the way that it's stamped right on this plate, it makes it seem like speed roll is something to do with the plate itself, which I don't necessarily think it is. I think it has more to do with the shaping of the shoe. There's a very aggressive rocker in the front of the shoe. And that just means it's a little bit easier to take a bigger shoe and pick it up off the ground and roll forward into that next push try. On the top, we have a very comfortable mesh upper in here, very breathable even for summer workouts. And it is reinforced with what I believe are TPU, kind of like racing stripes all throughout the shoe. I'm guessing some of these overlays are needed to help give this upper a little bit of structure, but I think a lot of these are maybe here for decoration as well. Overall, I do like the effect of it. It looks fantastic. And the fit on this upper has been really good, both for just putting the shoe on, giving me plenty of room. I went true to size and I feel like that's the way that most people should go, but also it helped kept everything kind of in place where it needed to be, even as I picked up the pace and had to hit some sharper corners. For a tongue, there is a lightly padded tongue, which is doing a pretty good job of staying out of the way. It's gusseted on both sides, so it's also gonna stay exactly put. There's not a lot of padding in this heel cup, which I thought was a really good choice for this shoe because Saucony does a really good job of making sure that the heel cup itself fits without having to rely on a lot of padding as a little bit of that cheat code that sometimes shoe brands will do. And for those of you who are looking for some structure in the heel cup, it's definitely here, but it's not obtrusive for those of you who don't like that kind of thing. And the last thing that I wanna to mention to you guys though is that this shoe comes for men in sizes and half sizes all the way up to 13. And it also is available in a 14 and a 15. So all my bigger, taller friends, Saucony's got you covered. All right, so that's some of the specs on this shoe. Let's talk about what it was like to actually run in it. And I really enjoyed running in this shoe. For me, this is a workout shoe. And for me, that meant longer workouts at pace changes that involved 5K effort speeds down to marathon effort speeds 
50s and kind of like everything in between there, that's when I felt like the shoe and I got along the best. I feel like there's a nice, pleasant amount of squish in the Power Run PB, especially in that forefoot. But because it also has that denser layer of regular Power Run and that three quarter length carbon fiber plate. I feel like even though I'm squishing and moving the phone a lot, every time I step down on it, it's not getting squirrely or wobbly underneath me. So every time I stamp my foot down, I could confidently push off and get into that next powerful stride. It was a really fun feeling for me. And even though the shoe comes in at a relatively heavy weight, I ultimately didn't feel like that was weighing me down too much. And I had a good time getting that shoe turned over, likely because there's also that really aggressive speed roll up front. So it didn't feel like I was working too hard to move all 10 ounces of that shoe. Now, I feel like that stability that I felt at that shoe at faster paces extends down even to the slower paces as well. And I felt like the shoe still felt like it had some squish to it, but it also had a lot of stability to it as well. In fact, for me, it was a little bit too much stability in there. I feel like the plate and that denser lower layer of power run, and there is a lot of it in this shoe, do a really good job of making sure that you have a nice stable landing for your foot. There's also a very wide footprint for you to land on too, and that's gonna help prevent the shoe from deflecting too much in one direction or the other. And that extra stability for me is kind of a negative. I know some of you are really going to appreciate it, but for me, I didn't love it. I don't like stability shoes generally. And the way that it felt to me is that kind of like, this shoe had me, instead of laying flat on the ground, it had me kind of like tilted up and outward a little bit because I do feel like there might be a little bit of extra density in the foam right here under the arch as well to go along with all the other kind of stabilizing elements that are in this shoe, namely that denser foam and that carbon fiber plate. It reminded me, in fact, a little bit of some of the light stability elements that are in the Endorphin Speed 3. I feel them even more prominently here in the Kinvara Pro, but not quite so much as I would feel in say something that I feel like is a super stability shoe like the endorphin shift. It kind of sits in the middle. So I would say it's like kind of in the light to medium stability shoe for me in terms of how I experience stability elements. So for those of you who are looking for neutral shoes with that hint of stability or maybe a stronger than a little bit of hint of stability in that shoe, I feel like this is something that you're really gonna love not only at those faster speeds where I like it, but also at some slower speeds as well. As far as the upper goes, it feels really nice. Saucony uppers typically are really quite excellent. I feel like it's lightweight, breathable, yet I do feel like you're gonna be able to run in this for plenty of miles. So overall, I feel like the Kinvara Pro is best for longer workouts where you're gonna have pace changes going from as slow as marathon speed up to 5K effort paces. Those speed ranges is where I feel like this shoe shines the brightest. But I also feel like for those of you who want a little bit of stability in your daily trainers, specifically who have been asking me in comments for a stability shoe that you can race in, I do feel like the Kinvara Pro is this shoe that you're gonna be able to take from every day all the way through race day with just that one and only one shoe. And that's also reflected in the pricing of the shoe. It comes in at $180. It'll be available starting in August, 2023. And for reference, that puts it about $10 more than the Endorphin Speed 3 and about $45 less than the other race-oriented shoe in the Saucony lineup, the Endorphin Pro. So that's the review of the Kinvara Pro. I really think it's a fantastic session shoe. So now let's get super nerdy and talk about some of the things that are kind of like scratching at my mind whenever I think about the Kinvara Pro. First, let's talk about what were they trying to do with this shoe. And so from the conversations that I recall having with Saucony down at the running event in Austin back last December, it's a kind of an industry trade show. It's typically a show reserved for buyers, people that like work at your local running shoe store, figuring out what shoes they're gonna stock over the course of the next year. Uh, but they allow media to attend this event as well. And from what I call in the discussions at that event, Saucony was telling me that the Kinvara Pro was designed as a way to take pressure off of another shoe in the Saucony lineup, and that would be the Endorphin Speed 3. Now, this is a lightweight shoe that I also really enjoy for workouts, and some of you have been using for racing as well. Some of you also really wanna use this shoe as a daily trainer, and so there's kind of like 
two different camps of people that are really liking the endorphin speed. And it's kind of hard to improve on a shoe when it has two very distinct kind of user groups that it's trying to satisfy at the same time. So in order to keep the endorphin speed three as that like speedier shoe that you might use for races, but you'll definitely want to use for your workouts, they wanted to make another shoe that can kind of like have all the comfort everyday training benefits of it and put it into a different shoe so that this shoe can like kind of be free to be whatever it needed to be in that speedier realm. And I think that overall, I think they've done that moderately well in terms of that objective. It takes kind of like a lot of the comfort elements of the Speed 3 and puts it into a different package that I think is slightly less speed oriented and has a little bit more stability, which I feel like a lot of Saucony runners tend to really appreciate. But that being said, why is it called the Kinvara Pro? Because it doesn't really remind me of Kinvara and it doesn't really feel pro to me if you're making a daily trainer shoe. I mean, like, what does pro even mean anymore? But I feel like this application where you're putting it into a daily trainer is really like stretching the limits of what pro can mean. But more importantly is why is it a Canvara pro? Because like it doesn't feel like a Canvara to me at all. For me, the Canvara was kind of like Saucony's original speed day shoe. It's low to the ground. It's a lot more of a firm shoe compared to most of the shoes that are being released now in 2023. It's kind of an old school, if not retro shoe. And for me, the Canvara pro has nothing old school or retro about it. And for anyone that has been enjoying the Canvara, I wouldn't recommend the Canvara Pro as like a pairing option to go along with it. So the fact that it's called a Canvara and the fact that it's called a Pro is very confusing to me. I really wish they would have just called it something else, but it's called the Canvara Pro and here we are. So what really is this shoe then? For me, the way that this shoe feels with its stack height, with its aggressive speed roll, there's a different shoe in the Saucony lineup that absolutely jumps out to me. And then I thought of the moment that I started running my first repetition in the shoe. And that's the recently released Saucony Endorphin Elite. Now, I don't feel like this is a stability shoe by any means. And so that is where these shoes kind of differ. But there's other elements in terms of the running dynamics in the shoes. When you're getting up on the toes, when you're putting in marathon pace or faster, I feel like these two shoes definitely remind me very much of each other. The Endorphin Elite has that race pedigree to it. It's lightweight. It's super springy. It's super bouncy. Its upper is designed to be as light as possible. There's absolutely no frills on this shoe. And I feel like a lot of that kind of like everyday comfort, those creature comforts are in this Kinvara Pro. And so I feel like this is your race shoe. This is your speed and training companion. And these two shoes absolutely go together. And I feel like this is a wonderful one to punch. And yet, and here's where things get even more confusing. There is still another shoe that the Canvara Pro reminds me of in the Saucony lineup already, and that's when I'm running slower in the Canvara Pro. This shoe definitely reminds me of the Saucony Endorphin Shift. That is, in my mind, a high stability shoe and has a very dense midsole foam. It's all power run, if I'm not mistaken, in that shoe with a bunch of stabilizing elements in it. I feel like the Canvara Pro can be a much lighter stability version of that. I feel like even though the back of the shoe looks a little bit more like the Endorphin Speed and the Endorphin Pro, it feels to me a lot more more like the endorphin shift. So I feel like that could be a one-two punch. If you're training in the endorphin shift and love it, you're gonna race in the Kimbara Pro and love that too. And that's gonna be a really nice one-two punch for the stability runner out there. So how do I wrap this video up? I feel like Saucony has been doing some really great work with their shoe offerings in the past few years, kind of like starting with the introduction of the endorphin lineup. That's when they really started to get my attention but the names are a wreck. And what I'm not suggesting is that Saucony has to rename or reorganize these shoes because I understand how absolutely confusing that's going to be to their consumers. But for you and me, the shoe nerds that are out there, or maybe you work in shoe retail and you're trying to like figure out how do I like suggest these shoes or understand these shoes, here are kind of like my groupings. I think that we need to think the endorphin shift, the endorphin shift being like the stability daily trainer. Then you've got like the slight stability speed work shoe that is the Kinvara Pro as related to the endorphin shift. And then in the other end of that even faster, you're going to have the Endorphin Elite. And I feel like that is like a kind of one, two, three that a lot of people are going to like. Although keep in mind that Endorphin Elite is going to appeal to a lot of people beyond the stability runner. I 
hate stability shoes pretty much, but I love the Endorphin Elite. So that's where things can get a little bit confusing, but I think thinking about those as a little mini triplet is going to really help people understand how those shoes kind of fit in the broader Saucony lineup. And I think that we also need to kind of rethink the Endorphin line as well. Now, we definitely need to kind of keep the Endorphin speed, but since so many people are using it as kind of like a lightweight daily trainer or a daily trainer that can do some speed work as well, I'd say let's just keep it there and let people use this as kind of like the daily trainer, even if it might still be called the Endorphin Speed. And also definitely keep the Endorphin Pro 3, which has been a fantastic racing shoe and has been one of the most easy to recommend racing shoes that I've encountered over the last year, especially because of its starting price at 225. And I think that if we're gonna put something in that speed category in the Endorphin line, instead of tweaking the speed, let's already take a different Saucony shoe that exists today and slot that in that kind of like middle spot. And I think that would be the Saucony Sinister. It's an all power run PB shoe, extremely lightweight coming in at less than five ounces of stated weight. Doesn't have a plate in there because it's a low, fast, minimalist shoe. I feel like that could be the speed shoe in the Endorphin lineup. If you want to think of like that as being like the kind of like honorary endorphin, leave the speed as that daily trainer because that's where kind of people are, are taking it. Now, there's one last thing to consider before we end this video and just to kind of add even more potential confusion to the Saucony lineup, but I feel like it definitely deserves a little bit of mention, especially here since we're talking about all these different Saucony shoes. And that is the fact that like, okay, let's say you do want to make the Endorphin Speed be that speed shoe. Let's say you want the Sinister to sit on its own. Maybe you really want to think of that as your Kinvara Pro, but let's leave the Sinister out of the Endorphin lineup. Let's do what we want to do with the Endorphin Speed, bringing it back as that speed day shoe. That leaves like, what is the daily trainer in the Endorphin lineup? Cause I don't think it's the Endorphin Shift. I feel like this could be a good time for Saucony to revisit the freedom. A lot of people didn't run in that shoe. I didn't run in that shoe, but on paper, I feel like that really could be like the endorphin daily trainer that Saucony has been looking for. And it's been right underneath their noses this entire time. Now it's kind of taken a turn. It's like the freedom cross sport and it's like a, hit workout shoe, but bring back the freedom, no stabilizing elements at all, make it a true neutral shoe, and it's all power run PB, no plate. I feel like that would be a really great endorphin daily trainer that you could insert into the line. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't know what's coming forward after 2023 with Saucony, but those are some thoughts on how to either change the Saucony lineup or reconfigure them mentally so you can kind of understand how all these shoes relate to each other. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense to at least some of you guys. Let me know if that didn't. I would love to hear from you guys in terms of where you think kind of all these shoes fit because it's starting to get a little bit confusing over at Saucony. I think they have a lot of great products. They just need to kind of like organize them a little bit better. So those are my thoughts on the Kinvara Pro and I guess basically the entire Saucony lineup for 2023. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to see you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?